Hello and welcome to this short series of videos entitled Adventures in Prayer. Prayers prayed by God's people. My name is Alan Bayliss and I'm the minister of World Baptist Church here in sunny North Somerset. Now, I had been taught from my earliest years that God always answers prayer. But not always as you might hope or expect. I was told to think in terms of traffic lights. Some prayers get a red light. God's answer is no. Some prayers get a green light. God's answer is yes. Some prayers get an amber light. They could go no or they could go yes. The important thing, if it's a amber or if it's a red, is not to give up. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, thought that he'd got a red when in actual fact it was an amber. Luke tells us that he was the priest on duty in Jerusalem when an angel appeared to him with a special message. It's in Luke 1 verse 13. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Well, that was quite some weight on Amber. I don't know about you, but if I'd been uh, Zechariah, I would have given up on praying for a son a long time ago. But God had heard, God had remembered, and all of a sudden the red changed to amber, changed to green. But when a prayer gets an almost immediate bright green light, a sense of wonder, gratitude and joy can flood your soul. And Genesis chapter 24 tells the story of a man who I think could have related to that. You see, his prayer was a prayer for guidance, and it was a prayer that he saw answered immediately. Let's read from the story. Then the servant prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she says, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one that you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcar, who was the wife of Abram's brother Nahor. Can I suggest at this point you pause the video you take your Bibles and you read the whole of Genesis <clears throat> chapter 24 to get the, the context of the story as a whole. <clears throat> read it <clears throat> or listen to the chapter on your um, uh, phone or from BibleGateway.com. And I'll see you in a short while. <clears throat> okay, welcome back. What can we take on board from the prayer of Abraham's faithful servant? Something I believe that illustrates well a vital aspect of discerning God's guidance. He was no doubt highly excited when he saw his prayer being answered almost before he'd had time to say Amen. But you know, coincidence wasn't enough for him. And so he hesitates. Why? Coincidental circumstances can be misleading. There was still something that he needed to confirm before he could be 100% sure that this woman was indeed the answer to his prayers. Hence the question of verse 23. He asked her, whose daughter are you? Circumstances thus far would seem to point to the fact that this was the young woman of God's choice for Isaac. But circumstances alone aren't enough. You know the story of Jonah. Jonah the prophet was told by God to go to Nineveh and preach to the people there. Jonah was having none of that, thank you very much, and he decides instead of heading east he's going west and he goes down to Joppa the port, he's looking for a boat that can take him to Spain. Would you believe it? As soon as he got there, there was a boat heading to Tarshish. Would you believe it? The captain of the boat was prepared to take him on board. All he had to do was pay his fare. 
I wonder, was Jonah thinking, ah, perhaps God has changed his mind. Bit of a coincidence, this, the boat being here just as I arrived. Well, Jonah got that completely wrong. If you know the story, God has to deal with him quite severely to get him back on track and head east to Nineveh. And so it is with the servant of Abraham. He knew that if this woman was not of the clan of Abraham, then watering the camels or no, she was not the answer to his prayer. There was a boundary line for guidance that Abram's servant would not cross. You see, God does not lead us beyond the boundaries of his word. Apparent answers to prayer have to pass the, does it line up with the Bible test? God would not lead you to commit adultery or into any inappropriate relationship. Coincidental circumstances might be a test of obedience to God's will rather than a sign of God's will. And as I've said, Jonah spectacularly failed that test. And neither, I believe, does God let us off something the Bible says that we should do. Sometimes people have said to me, oh, I'm waiting for God to guide me to be baptised. And I'm thinking, well, in the Bible, that's all the guidance that you need. It says that you should be baptised. And I've sometimes playfully asked people, can you show me your exemption certificate so that you don't have to get be baptised? And then I ask who signed it. <laughs> now, if God's word has given clear direction, that's all the guidance you need. It's not a question of if, but when. I have many stories to tell of how God has led me, one of them being how I ended up here in Whirl. Do you have your own story to tell of how God has answered your prayers for guidance? Well, I'd love to hear them. Drop me a line, give me a call, send me an email. Or are you presently praying for guidance? Have you come to a crossroads in your life and you're not sure which way to turn? Well, ask others to pray with you and for you. Ask me to pray for you. Just from my own experience of this, I am sure. If you're ready and willing for God to lead you, then God is ready and willing to guide you. Only be prepared for some surprises on the way. I'm not calling this short series of videos Adventures in Prayer or nothing. Thank you for being with me. I look forward to seeing you for our next adventure in prayer. God bless.